Hey guys, it's Luke here. I thought I would just give you a quick rundown of my 3D printer. Uh, I made this one about a year ago. I started de designing it about a year ago and finished it about eight months ago. The idea behind this printer was to have a bed large enough so that I wouldn't be limited by what I could print on it. So I wouldn't have to print long objects up, I could just print them flat. So this printer has a 45 by 45 centimeter print bed and it's about 70 to 80 centimeters tall. It's about 80 centimeters tall but probably can print up to about 70 centimeters. The printer itself, uh, it's just a basic wrap wrap. In here is the Arduino Mega and the Ramps 1.4 board. It's just running Marlin. Um, the printer is affectionately called Big Boy because it's so big. Uh, also controlling it, you can see here's a Raspberry Pi 0W and it's running OctoPrint and we've got a little Raspberry Pi cam here. So this print bed is heated. Um, stuck onto the underside is a mains powered uh, silicon heat mat which is just stuck onto the bottom of this 4mm aluminium print bed and that draws about just over 3 amps at 240 volts so it's quite a powerful heater in fact it uses more energy than the entire rest of the printer itself so that's controlled by a solid state relay in this um, power box here I've got the 12 volt 20 amp power supply in there which is more than enough to run all the steppers in the rest of the printer so 12 volts this goes up to the control box and then that's switched and so the heat bed switch comes out to here to then turn on and off the heat bed via these wires here and also got the temperature sensor here so the actual heat bed just sits on the y-axis rails here it's just supported by these screws with a spacer there see that which stops the heat from being transferred to the bottom so I've heard a lot of people say that you can't use an inductive sensor on an aluminium heat bed uh, which is just which is wrong <laughs> it's true that they won't work or they won't be as sensitive as an aluminium bed to something like steel or copper but they definitely do work in fact for a print bed of this size you definitely need some sort of automatic bed leveling so for those of you who aren't sure or don't know what automatic bed leveling is, basically the printer head just goes along and goes up and down different amounts until it can uh, detect the bed. And what it's doing is basically creating a map of the print bed surface. And I've got it doing this at the start of every print. Now this is necessary to correct for any uh, warping of the bed, especially for my print bed, which is only supported in the corners when it heats up to around 110 degrees which is pretty common especially when I'm printing with ABS plastic which is what I usually do um, it will warp quite a, uh, not that much but it does warp enough that you need this sort of uh, mapping to correct for any uh, deviances basically so you've probably noticed on my bed there's a lot of uh, this blue plastic still on here and that's because to get the actual print to stick, I've done the old ABS uh, plastic dissolved in acetone and then painted it on. Um, a lot of people don't like this because it is quite messy um, and it can be a bit hard to get the print off, though with a bit of a spatula metal scraper they usually pop off, not too bad. I did originally have captain tape on here, but with a print bed of this size it was really hard to get it on flat and smooth without any air bubbles consistently. Um, so my prints would always have these little bubbles at the bottom which was really annoying. But with this, um, yeah, you don't get any of that. Also, prints stick a lot better to this, um, to the ABS that's been uh, stuck on here with the help of the acetone. And especially when I'm doing really big prints because this is an open printer you will get a lot of problems with warping so having that 
really good adhesion to the board. It helps a lot with the print. I've actually got this uh, clear plastic cover which sits like a box over this printer to kind of keep the heat in, which I put on only for really big prints, for little prints. Um, I don't really bother because I don't really need it. But that is, it is pretty necessary as well as the good adhesion to the heat bed to keep the prints from peeling up and just warping. Step back here so you can kind of see the whole printer at once. Uh, it only cost me about 700 Australian dollars to build. The whole frame was just bought um, at my local, hard, local hardware store. It's pretty much just all um, shelving aluminium extrusions. These bits as well. Everything else was just bought online from Banggood or AliExpress or something like that. So it was pretty cheap. All the brackets are 3D printed as well, which uh, kept the cost down. Though it was made of some pretty cheap materials, the print quality is actually surprisingly good. Um, this is one that I accidentally broke when I was using it. But this is printed only with 0.2mm layer height. And the print quality is really good. I can actually get this printer to go down to 0.1 mil layer height resolution without any problems at all. It's, I've got a couple things printed. Of course, it's going to take ages to print anything of uh, any relative size to this print bed, so I don't. Um, but for, yeah, even for little tiny things, this printer doesn't have a problem. And for any big things uh, as well, it seems to have no problem at all. So that kind of shows that you can make a really good printer, make one of this size, um, without having to spend too much on uh, material, oh, material and parts. So that's a quick introduction to uh, my 3D printer. Uh, if you have any questions about wanting to make your own or anything like that, I'll be happy to answer. So see you next time.